Hi, I'm Kristen and I will be the narrator. We are going to, to conduct a cranial nerve exam. Whitney will be the clinician and Morgan will be the patient. The first nerve that we are going to assess will be the visceral afferent function of the olfactory, which is cranial nerve one. This is responsible for sense of smell. Have you had any changes in sense of smell lately? No, I have not experienced any changes in smell. The patient's response no indicates that there is no damage to cranial nerve one. We are now going to assess the somatic afferent function of the optic nerve, which is cranial nerve two. This is responsible for vision. Place your hand over your right eye and read that chart. P, Z, D, D, P, D, C. That is correct. Place your hand over your left eye and read the chart. F, T, L, P, E, F, D. That is correct. The patient's response indicates no damage. We will check the part of the visceral efferent function of cranial nerve three, ocular motor nerve. That constricts the pupil by innervating the pupillary sphincter and ciliary muscles. I am now going to shine a light um, in your eye to see if your pupils constrict. Pupils constrict. Patient's response indicates that there is no damage to cranial nerve 3. We are now going to assess somatic efferent functions for the movement of the eyes, which consists of the ocular motor nerve to the superior rectus, inferior rectus, medial rectus, inferior oblique, and lavatal papillary superius, trochlear nerve to superior oblique, and abducens to lateral rectus, which is cranial nerve 3, 4, and 6. I'm going to show you this tool. Please keep your head straight. Please follow the tool movement with your eyes, and please don't move your head while following. The eyes are symmetrical when looking forward, and eyes are able to follow the pen correctly, indicating that the trochlear abducens and ocular motor nerve are working correctly. We are now going to assess the somatic afferent function of the cranial nerve 5, the trigeminal nerve. This correlates to the ophthalmic, maxillary, and mandibular nerves of the face. I'm going to check your ophthalmic nerve by tapping your forehead area. Please tell me if you feel the tap. I felt that. Now I'm going to check the maxillary nerve. I'm going to tap your cheeks area. Please tell me if you feel that. I felt that. Now we're going to check the mandibular nerve by tapping places below your lip. I felt that. Now we are going to check the somatic efferent functions of the mandibular nerve that innervates the muscles of mastication. Please move your jaw like you're pretending to chew some gum. The client has sensation in all of her face and is able to move her muscles of mastication, indicating the trigeminal nerve is working. Now we are going to examine the somatic efferent function of the facial nerve, or cranial nerve 6, that innervates muscles of facial expressions and stapedius. Please wrinkle your forehead and hold that. Please close your eyes. Now puff out your cheeks. The somatic efferent function of the facial nerve is functioning correctly according to the symmetry of the movement that the patient is expressing. Now we are going to ask questions regarding the visceral efferent function of the facial nerve that innervates lacrimal gland and saliv salivary glands as well as the visceral efferent function of the glossopharyngeal nerve that innervates parotid salivary gland. Are you able to cry or do you experience dry eyes? Yes, I am able to cry and no, I don't experience dry eyes. Do you have any trouble salivating? No. The patient's response indicates no issues with the visceral efferent function of the facial nerve and the glossopharyngeal nerve. The next nerve to test is the visceral afferent functions of the cranial nerve 9, glossopharyngeal, that innervates the taste from posterior one-third of tongue, visceral sensation from posterior, posterior one-third of tongue, or oropharynx, and carotid sinus and carotid body and visceral afferent function of cranial nerve 6 that innervates taste from anterior two-thirds of tongue. Are you able to taste different things? Yes. The patient's response indicates no issues with the visceral afferent function of the cranial nerve 9 and 6. The next nerves to look at are the somatic efferent component of the cranial nerve 9, glossopharyngeal, that innervates stylopharyngeus, and cranial nerve 10, vagus, that innervate pharynx and larynx, and cranial nerve 12, hypoglossal, which innervates all tongue muscles except for pallidoglossus. Okay, please open your mouth and say off. Oh. The patient said ah, and the tongue and uvula shows no deviation, which indicates no damage to these nerves. The, the next cranial nerve is cranial nerve 8, vestibular cochlear, checking the somatic afferent function. 
This nerve controls hearing and equilibrium or balance. Please cover your right ear with your hand and I will whisper something into your ear. Please repeat what I say. The dogs are running down the hill. Now I'm going to whisper something in your left ear. Please tell me what I say. My name is Lizzie. The client can hear from both ears, meaning the nerve part responsible for auditory is working. Okay, can you get up um, from the seat and get up and down? Sit down, up and down. I don't feel dizzy. Um, can you walk to the wall, putting one foot in front of the other, then walk backwards? I don't do you feel, feel dizzy? dizzy? No, you don't. Okay. Can you do two steps to one side and then two steps to do the other and tell me if you feel dizzy? I don't feel dizzy. Okay. Can you look at my tool while turning into a circle and please tell me if you feel dizzy? I don't feel dizzy. This indicates that equilibrium part of the nerve is working. The last nerve to test is the somatic efferent function of the cranial nerve 11, accessory nerve, which innervates the trapezius and the sternocleidomastoid muscles. Please shrug your shoulders and I will put my hands on your shoulders. Please resist against my hands. Now, please turn your head to the right and I'm going to put my hand on your cheek. Please resist. Now I'm going to do it on the other side. The client can move muscles even with resistance, which shows the nerve is working. That concludes the end of the cranial nerve examination.